Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Saturday, August 1st, 2015, around 6.45 in the morning, Berwick, Massachusetts. Going to be a nice and sunny day out, low humidity, highs in the mid-80s. Some news to report, the Boston Red Sox beat uh, Tampa Bay Rays by a score of 7-5, two straight for the Red Sox, and also... The low spinners beat State College by the score of 9-3. to three. And that's about it on the news. My first video subject of the day is a tribute to WWE Hall of Famer Rowdy, Rowdy Piper, who passed away yesterday at the age of 61 due to, to a heart attack. Piper was one of the most famous wrestlers of all time, one of the most greatest villains. He was the hot scott and stuff he he was built from glasgow scotland but he he never lived there or never grew up there i don't know if he's ever been there during his lifetime he his real name was actually rodney tombs and he was born in saskatchewan canada and his father was part of the royal mountain canadian police and as a youngster Rodney got into a lot of trouble. He got expelled from junior high school and stuff. And at a young age, he left home. And he lived in hotels and got took odd jobs to support himself. He got into boxing and wrestling. He made his professional wrestling debut at the age of 15, 1969, in Winnipeg, Canada. His first match was against Larry the Axe. Henny. He wrestled primarily like an AWA as a job uh, and, and few other regional territories in the early 70s. It was spelled as Roddy, Roddy the Piper, but like eventually became Rowdy Roddy Piper. And, and eventually, you know, when he went to California in the mid 70s, he became a heel there, feuding with the Guerrero family and stuff. And some of his promos in California were very great. He he started wearing a kilt and bagpipes too, like before he came out and stuff like that. He also wrestled in many years in Portland, on uh, um, Portland Wrestling Pacific Northwest, where he feuded with. Buddy Rose and so many others. He became one of the most popular wrestlers in the Portland wrestling territory. And like in 1979, he wrestled at Madison Square Garden for the WWF. And he was supposed to go there and was supposed to be like few with Bob Backlund over the WWF title. But a lot of the other like heels, especially the managers, Captain Leo Albano and Classy Freddy Wesley were kind of, kind of jealous of Piper and they stuck like toilet paper in his bagpipes when, for the Madison Square Garden and stuff and a couple of television tapings that he did and it was off, it, was, it made Piper look bad and Vince McMahon Sr. did not invite Piper back to the WWF afterwards because of that incident but Piper was still a hot commodity in the early 80s Piper went down south to work for Georgia Championship Wrestling. He was as a heel announcer with Gordon Soley. He, he was good on a mic, Piper, because it was one of the best talkers, and he was a heel announcer, but eventually he became a face announcer when he protected Gordon Soley from the magnificent Morocco. When Morocco was going to attack Gordon Soley, and he feuded with Morocco, in Georgia Championship Wrestling. Also, Piper did some heel commentary in F Championship Wrestling from Florida. And also, Piper was in the Mid-Atlantic um, Championship Wrestling area with Jim Crocker Promotions. He won the Mid-Atlantic title and, uh, and uh, in the U.S. title. He feuded with um, such wrestlers as Wahoo McDaniel, Jack Briscoe, Rick Flair and Greg the Hammer Valentine. The, um, Piper's feud with Greg the Hammer to Valentine was so classic over the U.S. title. The Hammer beat Piper um, for the U.S. title after um, um, 
the hammer like attack Piper's ear and stuff. It was just a storyline and stuff that he injured his ear so much he couldn't continue. Equal Lippley and Piper lost a lot of hearing in that ear. That was the storyline. Their feud culminated with a dog collar match at Starcade 1983, non-title for the U.S. For, for non-title match and Piper won. It was a classic match. And this is when the time Vince McMahon Jr. bought the WWF from his father and became WWE and Vince McMahon was going na nationwide and he signed Piper and Piper became probably the biggest heel in professional wrestling. He first managed um, Paul Mr. Wonderful Orndorff and Dr. D. Javis Schultz and he got his own interview segment called Piper's Pit which Piper would mock the faces and stuff and cheer the heels. One of the first ones he interviewed a preliminary wrestler, Frankie Williams. He was mocking him, why doesn't he win? I might win, but I give it a whole stuff. And Piper just attacks Frankie Williams and he said this one of his most famous quotes, just, just, they think when they got all the answers, I changed the questions. And he, P Piper had another one with the one of the most infamous Piper's Pits of all time with Jimmy Su no Superfly Snooker. He was mocking him and stuff. And then he hit him with bananas and coconuts and then all hell broke loose and stuff. Piper and Snooker had a few which were very, very brutal and stuff like that. It was awesome. But Piper's ma main focus was feuding with Hulk Hogan over the WWE title. They had a match to war to settle the score in February 1985, which they broadcast on MTV. The special guest win announcer was NBC Sports Bob Costas and stuff. And it was a, like a smudge and stuff. Hogan won by disqualification. They had Mr. T involved and Orndorff and um, Orton, who was um, Cowboy Bob Orton, who was um, Piper's bodyguard, which Piper called Ace. And then they had a big match at WrestleMania 1, the main event at WrestleMania 1. It was Piper and Orndorff with, um, with like Ace in their corner facing off against um, Mr. T and Hulk Hogan with Superfly Jimmy Snooker in their corner. And the referee was Pat Patterson, Muhammad Ali was at Madison Square Garden. Piper and Orndorff lost. And eventually Piper t turned on Orton and they had a feud and stuff. Also, Piper was feuding with Bruno San Martino and stuff. The Piper's pitch were getting um, more and more great and stuff. WrestleMania 2, Piper wrestled, I mean, boxed Mr. T in a boxing match, which was pretty good. Several weeks before that, um, Piper and Orn Orton shaved um, the Haiti kid's hair and stuff, which was classic and stuff like that. And after WrestleMania 2, Piper left the WWE for a while. He went on, he went to film a movie called Body Slam because Piper Piper was becoming a mainstream star and stuff with his looks and stuff. After Piper came back to the WWE in uh, late summer of 1986, replacing Piper's pit for, for a time was the flower shop. It was with adorable Adrian, Adrian Adonis and Piper gave um, Adonis his blessing to take over the um, Piper's pit as the flower shop. But when Piper returned, the fans cheered him and stuff. And when he in when in like his we debut match on television, Piper beat a preliminary wrestler named AJ Petucci with one arm be tied behind his back. It was awesome. Fans were cheering like crazy. And then Piper wanted Piper's pit to be back back and adorable Adrian and Donis didn't want to. And then the then they had like Piper's Pit versus um the flower shop. They had the magnificent Morocco come down and get interviewed, but he attacked Piper and also Cowboy Bob Orton and Adrian Adonis and Mr. Fuji and the mouth of self Jimmy Hart attacked Piper, but then Piper came back and, you know, destroyed the set of the flower shop. And then Piper and Adonis went on to a long running feud which culminated in Rowdy Rowdy Piper's retirement match at WrestleMania three. It was a hair versus hair match. Piper beat um, Adonis with the sleeper hall and then Brutus Barber Beefcake 
cut Adonis's hair and stuff. And this was actually Piper was leaving the WWE for a while to f film the movie They Live. And what, They Live was a very good movie. It was directed by John Carpenter. And Piper was great at mo this movie. His, his one of his most famous quotes was, I'm here to come and chew bubble gum and I'm all out of bubble gum and stuff. Piper was gone from wrestling for two years. He made an appearance at WrestleMania 5, The Return of Piper's Pit. And he had Brother Love and Morton Downey Jr. at his grass. It was pretty funny. He, um, um, Brother Love came out with like mocking Piper with the kilt and stuff. And Morton Downey Jr. was like a loud mouth. Piper like ex extinguished Morton Downey Jr. cigar. And then he attacked Brother Love. Over the summer of 1989, Piper made some appearances for like Portland wrestling and stuff. There were even rumors he was going to go to the fading AWA, but he resigned with the WWE. He appeared as a guest commentator on, on primetime wrestling and stuff. And then at SummerSlam 1989, he interfered in the recruit Ultimate Warrior match, and he mooned Rick Rude, and this started a, a feud between Rick Rude and Rowdy Rowdy Piper that went all over the WWE in late 1999 and early 1990, which culminated in several steel cage matches and stuff, and they had a couple of angles where, like, Piper was attacking, but was, like, on the brother love, so, um, Piper was, like, like, beating up, um, Bobby the Brain Heen and then Brother Love on the Brother Love show, but and he was gonna throw um for like mouthwashing both of them, but but um Rick Rude comes in and attacks Piper and throws mouthwashing him and stuff, and then Piper goes crazy and he attacks the suits and stuff and like that, and it was real real funny. Also, Piper had a WrestleMania six match against um, Bad News Brown, and he was painted pot black, pot white, and it was, you know, kind of a little racist and stuff, and it was a double disqualification between Piper and Bad News Brown. Originally, Bad News Brown was going to go over Piper in that match, but Piper bitched about it, and this was a double count out and stuff. Why couldn't Piper just do the job to Bad News Brown? Because, you know, just to get that storyline and stuff. And then in the summer of 1990, Piper was, you know, basically being phased out of being in storylines and stuff, and he became a color man for Vince McMahon on WWE Superstars. He was pretty good as a annou uh, announcer and stuff. He was he was good at it. From time to time, he would get in the ring and stuff against the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, especially when Virgil, that when Virgil turned face and stuff. Piper was being his coach and stuff, helped him out in that. It, and also, Piper got some title matches on house shows against Mr. Perfect for the Intercontinental title. In uh, late, late fall of 1991, Piper returned to wrestling. He And he was going to go for the WWE title f at the Royal Rumble 1992. They were hyping that up. And also, Piper had beat like The Undertaker in several classic get matches at house shows and stuff. And... At the Royal Rumble 1992, Rowdy, Rowdy Piper replaced Bret Hart and beat the Mountie for the Intercontinental title at Royal Rumble. And he also went to the Royal Rumble trying to get the title shot at for the bat for, for the world title, but he didn't. And then the next couple months, Piper was hyping up a match between Bret Hart at WrestleMania 8 for the Intercontinental title, which was pretty good and stuff. Piper was subletting the heel heel all and stuff and there was rumors he was going to turn heel on Bret the Hitman Hart but you know he didn't and that was a great match Piper and Bret Hart had at WrestleMania 8 um Hart pinned Piper with a small package for one two three and that was awesome and then Piper for the next two years leaves like leaves wrestling and stuff and appears in movies and stuff and and he like came Camp Hell came to Frogtown and stuff. Was rumors in like 1993 Piper was going to go to WCW, but those rumors were untrue and stuff. I heard of some rumors WCW kind of lowballed an offer for him. He didn't take it. 
then in 1994, he appears at WrestleMania 10 and as a special guest referee and has a has an interview segment called The Bottom Line, which was shown on All-Star Wrestling. No, I mean All-American Wrestling and also at Canada in 1994. Piper has a match with Jerry the King Lawler, which was very, very awful, but, you know, it was one of the worst main events of all time to end the pay-per-view, and they had, like, a wrestler, a kind of a skinny guy who mocked Piper on the King's court who dressed like Piper, but actually, it was actually Piper, one of Piper's friends, and Piper won that match against Jerry the King Lawler, which was awful and stuff like that. And for the, for the next two years, Piper would make occasional appearances in the WWE and stuff as, like, special guest referees, commissioner and stuff. He had a match with Goldust at WrestleMania 12, which was awesome. It was a back lock ball, and it was probably one of the best matches on the, the, the show. And they also showed him a chase of police cards, which was similar to the Bronco chase of O.J. Simpson and stuff like that. In the fall of 1996, Piper left the WWE to go to WCW finally, and he was a face, and he feuded with Hollywood Hulk Hogan. He made his appearance at Halloween Havoc 1996 after Hogan's main event match against Randy Savage. The fans cheered Piper, saying he um, Hogan was the only one who did not beat him and stuff. And they had a long-running feud that started at Starcade 1996 with Piper putting Hogan in sleep ball in a non-title match. The hype of this ma of this feud was getting great. Eric Bischoff joined the NWO during this time, and all the hype of that was awesome. And then Piper was granted a world title match against Hulk Hogan at at like at like Super Bowl. 1997 Super Bowl 6 and they had some of the insane promos Piper was doing even he did an insane promo at Alcatraz the hype of these promos were very very good and stuff like that but the match quality of Hogan versus Piper was awful and stuff um, Piper lost to Hogan for the WCW title Super Bowl 6 when Macho Man Randy Savage interfered to join the NWO and then Piper gets shuffled down the cards like teaming with Ric Flair eventually he turned on Ric Flair and also um, Hogan and Piper had a cage match at Halloween Havoc 1997 which, which was a train wreck and stuff and, and Piper would continue to bounce on and off with WCW for the next three years and stuff appearances and stuff his wrestling skills were diminished to a point where it was awful and stuff and you know they just WCW just wanted named value for Piper and stuff he probably was collecting a paycheck for them and when WCW folded in 2001 Piper appeared in like several independent cards and stuff as a guest commissioner and stuff 2003 Piper returns to the WWE to like feud with Hulk Hogan he interferes in Wrestlemania 19 match between Hogan and Vince McMahon he was going to hit Vince McMahon but he had hit um, Hogan instead which was you know very awful and stuff because we were gonna get another Hogan Piper feud why couldn't Piper hit Vince McMahon and stuff like that I think Piper's dream was to have a Wrestlemania match with Vince McMahon but that would have been a that would have been the pop. The interviews would be pretty good, but the match would have been awful and stuff. And Piper like was faced off against Mr. America a couple of times. It was Hulk Hogan under mask and stuff, but that was short lived because Hogan got mad at a WrestleMania payoff, and also Piper got said some stuff on Real Sports on HBO about wrestling deaths and stuff that the WWE didn't like and. They stopped his working agreement with them for a while. Piper appears a few wrestling shows. In 2005, Piper gets inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame, which was pretty good. And he also brings back Piper's pitch from time to time at WrestleMania 21. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold gives Piper the stone, which was good. <laughs> awesome. And then for the rest of his time in the, in the WWE, Piper was under a Legends contract, 
he would appear from time to time when they had like old school Raws and old school Smackdowns. He would always bring Piper's pick back. And he would always get in the ring a few times. He and Ric Flair be became WWE Tag Team Champions briefly in 2006 and stuff. And he was in that Legends match in 2009 with him, Superfly Jimmy Snooker, and... Ricky the Dragon Steamboat against Chris Jericho at WrestleMania 25. That was just to hype up the wrestler movie with Mickey Rourke. And Piper's last match in the ring in 2011 was with Cowboy Bob Orton. They wrestled against Terry Funk and Cactus Jack. It was an awful match. It was an independent promotion and stuff. One of an awful match and stuff. And then Piper still made appearances for WWE into like 2014 and stuff and he appeared on a few reality shows piper and and he had a podcast called on podcast one for a while but that got discontinued early this summer because of some stuff with stone cold steve austin and stuff and a couple of days ago rowdy rowdy piper was had a heart attack and passed away at the age of 61 which is very sad and stuff because it's been a hard year on west on um, wrestling deaths first with like tommy rogers and then the, the american dream dusty Rhodes and nature boy buddy landau piped as the fourth fourth professional wrestler to die in two months and stuff and piper was probably one of the best heels of all time wwe voted on him as the number one heel on a poll years ago plus his piper's pit was awesome. It was probably the best like interview segment from for a professional wrestler of all time. He, Piper would mock. He, he he antagonized a lot of people on there, and it was real good when he was a heel doing the Piper's Pit. When he was a face doing the Piper's Pit, I ah, was you know, okay and stuff like that. But the fans loved Piper as a face or a heel. No matter what, because he, he had the charisma and stuff like that. And he was a decent worker and stuff like that. Piper never won the NWA world title or the WWE world title. But he should have maybe gotten a run with at least the WWE world title. Because he was over with the fans and stuff. And he probably st stuck around the WWE in the like, late 90s instead of going to WCW, eventually he probably would have got a run with the WWE World title as a thank you for all the years in the business and stuff. And Piper had a DVD out 2006 with the history, which is a pretty good selling DVD. It's one of the best copies of them all. And he talks about when he wrestled for the WWE when they ever go to Portland, Oregon. He would never wrestle because Don Owens ran at the Portland Territory. He had so much respect for Don Owens and stuff like that. Piper made Portland his adopted hometown for many years until he moved to Los Angeles a few years ago. It's very sad to see Piper gone at the age of 61. It's another, it's another wrestler who's left us too soon and stuff like most professional wrestlers don't don't reach like see many of them pass away in the 40s in the 40s 50s or early 60s it's very very sad and rest in peace piper you will be missing and, and your talents were great in the 1980s in wwe well that's about it on him and i'll be back later to more video vlogs will be about um is flavia girl a baseball hall of fame in the final of the series of is ex player hall of famer for this time for this year and the last video blog will be about the personality profile which will be about wwe hall of famer terry funk former nwa world champion his famous quote is you like sucking dog you dusty loads have a good day facebook youtube and twitter always i say keep calm and i'm a julie Brennan guy molly rosenbaugh the fox 35